Today's episode is one that I have been looking forward to for quite a while now. My guest is Dr. Nathan S. Bryan. He's an international expert in nitric biochemistry and molecular medicine. Okay, so nitric oxide is the topic for today. Um, I've heard Dr. Bryan speak a couple times now in person, and it is definitely always the, it's the one talk that gets me pulling my laptop out, taking tons of notes, having all these like epiphanies. Yeah, it's really cool stuff. Um, yeah, he's, I mean, quite frankly, it's just like my personal opinion, but I think he'll go down as like a legendary person in the field of nitric oxide for sure. Um, he has more than 20 years in academic research, has led to many seminal discoveries and resulted in dozens of issued US and international patents on this topic. Um, products from his innovations are the most successful nitric oxide products on the market and all science backed. And I, I kind of wish I had had him like ask him to pull up all his like photos. So make sure you go to his website, go to N1O, the letter O1.com. And you, you can see more of this stuff. It's like, just blow your mind, but I'm going to have him go ahead and blow your mind first on this episode. Um, if you guys end up wanting to get any of these products, I take them. I've been recommending them to clients. Um, they did give me a coupon code for the episode and it's coach Tara and it's 10% off and free shipping. Um, wow. I you just enjoy. It's time to get your mind blown about the importance of understanding nitric oxide in your body. It's not just some athletic enhancer supplement. Like some of you may have heard of. It's so much more than that. We're going to get into nutrition. We're going to get in a mouthwash, like all of these components of nitric oxide that you probably haven't heard of wound healing skin is really, really cool as well like biohacking your skin. So yeah, cool stuff. Let's go ahead and get in. Here is Dr. Nathan S. Bryan. All right. So I have been very much looking forward to this interview. Uh, I, you know, go to a lot of these health conferences and you, I would say you and Patrick Porter are the ones that just really knock my socks off where I'm like feverishly writing notes. Like, oh my gosh, there's so much here. So I'm really <laughs> excited to bring nitric oxide talk to my audience today because you pretty much blew my mind. I've heard you speak a couple of times now and I'm like, this is super important. So in terms of place to start, I mean, should we talk about, I guess we, some basic education yeah, yeah. on why people even need to care about this. Why do people need to know what nitric oxide is and care? Well, thanks, Tara. Look, it's great, great meeting you. Great being with you. And thanks for the invite. Now, we've, we've had this on the schedule now for several months. Yeah. Um, so I've been looking forward to, to speaking with you as well. But yeah, as you mentioned, so nitric oxide is foundational, especially for people who are looking uh, that are healthy and, and looking to prevent getting sick or even sick people looking to get healthy when the medical uh, paradigm, the current medical treatment has failed them. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a molecule that's responsible for the regulation of blood flow, for the oxygen delivery. It controls inflammation, oxidative stress, and immune dysfunction, the hallmarks of uh, every major age-related chronic disease, from cardiovascular disease to diabetes, Alzheimer's, autoimmunity, all these conditions are associated with nitric oxide deficiency. So your body cannot and will not heal without nitric oxide. So I've spent the past 25 years in research and discovery and drug development and product technology trying to figure out how do we restore and recapitulate nitric oxide signaling in the human body. And that's really what we've done very successfully over the past 15 years. We know how the body makes nitric oxide. We know what goes wrong in people that can't make it. And now we know how to fix it. And am I correct in remembering from my feverish notes that nitric oxide is what helps oxygen come off of hemoglobin? Is that No, is you're that exactly correct? right. So this is Yay. a relatively new discovery. So <laughs> part of the, what's called the Bohr effect. It's how oxygen comes off hemoglobin. You pick up carbon dioxide and now it's the part of the cardiorespiratory cycle. So, you know, we really understood the importance of that during COVID over the past three years, because people would, you know, lose blood oxygen saturation, they go to the hospital, give 100% oxygen, even put on mechanical vent, and their blood oxygen saturation wouldn't improve. So the problem wasn't an insufficient uh, amount of oxygen, it was insufficient uptake and delivery of oxygen. That's the role of right. nitric oxide. And so we would find the people that were hypoxic or had hypoxemia, they would take our nitric oxide and we could take blood oxygen saturation from 78 to 96 within five minutes, five minutes Just breathing room air. So it goes, it showed us wow. how critical nitric oxide is in oxygen delivery. And of course that's important, not just for, you know, respiratory viruses or pneumonia or respiratory conditions, but, you know, well-trained athletes, you know, oxygen becomes limiting, especially in endurance yeah. athletes, or even when you go to altitude, uh, you know, oxygen becomes limiting there and nitric oxide is what 
will prevent you from getting altitude sickness or actually enhance your performance Mm -hmm. if you're trying to improve your performance. That's what I've been using it for right for the gym. (laughs) Um, okay. So why, like, let's get into how we normally like in in an ideal world, right? Cause I'm sure you run into the same thing as me all the time. It's like, I have to take pills. And I'm like, these are not pills. These are, we don't, I know I also would love if I could just eat healthy food from nature. And I, I love that idealistic world that that sounds really great that's not reality anymore not right now hopefully we can get there with regenerative agriculture and you know good people pushing good missions forward but that's not reality right now like our food is not how it was designed to be because of agricultural processes and all these other you know chemicals and all these things so how would we normally get nitric oxide in our body and why are there these deficiencies now yeah. it's a very good point and very important question So there's two ways the body makes nitric oxide. I'll talk very briefly about kind of the first pathway to be discovered. But there's an enzyme found in the lining of the blood vessel that converts arginine to nitric oxide. And that's typically how we regulate the second-to-second blood flow and oxygen delivery. And it's known now that the older you get, the less functional that enzyme becomes. So we make less nitric oxide from arginine the older we get. Mm -hmm. But in an ideal world where people are eating the right foods and getting enough moderate physical exercise, then we can maintain the structure and function of that enzyme. But that's just not the case because we're exposed to, mm-hmm. you know, toxicants everywhere we go, whether it's air pollution, whether it's EMF, whether it's glyphosate on the food that shuts down nitric oxide production, whether it's high sugar and carbohydrate intake that glycates the enzyme and makes it dysfunctional. So there are mm-hmm. a number of things that disrupt that enzymatic activity. Mm-hmm. The other pathway, what we call the kind of the compensatory pathway is through diet. So we can eat things like green leafy vegetables or vegetables that are enriched in nitrate that then the body can convert into nitric oxide, but that's dependent upon oral bacteria. It's dependent upon stomach acid production. Mm. And so this, I think, is the greatest deficit in nitric oxide production because we have to consider three things. Number one, are you getting enough nitrate from your diet? And I think what you're referring to in 2015, we published a survey across five different cities across the U.S. and we analyzed the nitrate content of those vegetables and found, you know, a 50 to 100 fold difference in the nitrate content of celery or broccoli or spinach from wow. New York to Dallas to L.A. to Raleigh to Chicago. So it, it just depends upon the farming practices, the soil conditions. We're finding out the number of lightning storms every year hmm. affect nitrogen assimilation or nitrogen content in the soil. Hmm. Um, then the other big problem is organic, you know, organically grown vegetables to get an organic label. You're not allowed to add nitrogen based fertilizers to the soil. So in essence, these soils become nitrogen deficient, vegetables become nitrate deficient, and you cannot eat enough organic vegetables to get enough nitrate to promote nitric oxide. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. So like I, I get it. I feel it. I'm like, no, no. What, wait, do we eat glyphosate? Then, then that down blocks the enzyme production. What do we do? <laughs> Well, I think the answer is you have to, you know, I, I'm a big believer in in buying local. You know, I live yep. out on 800 acres in the middle of Texas and we grow our own food. We raise our own food. So beef. awesome. And so we don't, I'm not organic. So I add nitrogen, a standardized amount of nitrogen every year to the soil. And I do soil samples to figure out what's depleted in this soil uh-huh. this year hmm. based on grazing and, and fertilizing and the manure that's spread by the cows. That's awesome. And then we, we basically replete the soil, but I don't, it's not organic, but I also don't add any herbicides or pesticides to the yeah. vegetables that I'm growing. Uh, so I think it's important if you can buy local from a local yeah. farmer where you know where your food's coming from, but you know, this, this whole pressure of feeding a growing population, global population, there's data showing that there's a 78% deficiency or decline in all nutrients, trace minerals and nutrients in the food that we've grown in the U S since 1947. Yep. Yeah. So it's just Insane. the efficiency of farming is at the deficiency of certain nutrients and minerals. Right. So just like you said, most Americans, even by the inhane study, 95% of Americans are deficient in iodine. 85% of Americans are deficient in magnesium, selenium, chromium, these trace minerals, mm-hmm. because we're not getting it from the food we eat. So as you mentioned, you have to supplement. And I think right. the only way to do that is through personalized nutrition, yep. do analysis on your own blood, 
see what your body's exactly. missing and then you have to replete it. Exactly. That's what people are like, what supplements do you take? I'm like, it doesn't matter what I take, but do you <laughs> run some labs? Like it does not matter. You might not need methylated folate. Like I apparently did on my lab, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or my DNA stuff. Um, okay. So just to kind of back up what you were saying, I did a, I toured, there's a, have you heard of the chef's garden in Ohio? Um, yes. a farmer That's Lee wonderful. Jones. Yeah. They're awesome. So I went up there and I stayed up there and I toured the whole farm and they're wonderful, but they have a research lab too, like that on there. And, and it was so crazy because one of their research scientists was showing me all the reports of the going and buying produce at the grocery store and that produce, I mean, like their levels were all like, you know, really good levels of all, because obviously they're <laughs> actively pursuing that, right. but the ones from the grocery store, it was like, some of them had like a, you know, barely a bar on sodium, zero on selenium, like, like hardly anything. Like, so I got to see it in real time. Like we hear these statistics, like you said, like our soil quality is going down and it was really cool to go see, like, like we just bought this from the grocery store down the street and that's what's in it, you know, and it's, it's real and it's, that's where we're at right now. And yeah, if you can find a farmer's market, uh, I found like a regenerative farmer. They hardly have anything, right? Like I feel bad. Like I'm like, (laughs) I want all of this. Is that okay? (laughs) Well, the beauty of the chef's garden is, you know, I've been there and I've toured it and I've collaborated with them and kind of, you know, how do we certify and how do we, how do we market their, their produce in terms of nitric oxide kind of certified greens or vegetables. And yeah, the beauty of that is you can buy and and buy the vegetables from them. They'll ship it to you. It's the freshest food you'll ever eat. Yeah. And some of the foods that I didn't think I liked, um, you know, I tried theirs and I know. it actually tasted really, really well. So it's, it's incredible. The difference in the taste profile I know. of vegetables when they're grown correctly. Right. And while we're raving about those guys, cause they're beautiful humans doing big work, like, like it made me sad when I got there, they had like a tray of tomatoes, like, you know, beautiful tomatoes in my, in my room. And I kept joking with Amy, the head of like the nutrition there. I was like, I like binge ate tomatoes. Right. And they had little salt, all these little salts for me. And normally like, I'm like heavily dipping my tomatoes in salt. And I was like, there is no way I could add salt to these. They definitely don't need salt. And it made me sad in a way. Cause I was like, this is why people don't like vegetables because without those mineral profiles, especially without the sodium, they don't taste that good. And That's then when exactly they have right. the natural mineral balance that they're supposed to have, it's like, Oh, no wonder people don't like vegetables. Got it. You know? Yeah. So yeah. Well, order look, from them, guys. Yeah. They're certainly doing it right. And I think I would recommend everybody order from them, but you know, the challenge is how do you scale that to feed a right. growing population? And it's, um, uh, more, more of us, more of us need to do what to do you're it. doing. That's right. right. Yeah. I feel like the centralization of food sounded great. It's destroying us and I can get all political. I like, I feel like it's making yeah. us like really give away a lot of our freedom. Cause we're like, we need food, <laughs> That's right. but okay. All right. So let's come back to nitric oxide. Um, I wanted to hit, did you say that sugar blocks the enzyme that helps turn the arginine into ni- nitric oxide in the blood That's vessels? Right. So- yeah, there's these things called end glycosylation end products or advanced glycosylation end products. They call them agents. And so when you consume too much uh, refined carbohydrates or sugars, you lead to the glycation mm. or the attachment of the sugar molecule onto proteins and enzymes and it makes them dysfunctional. Mm-hmm. And it leads to a lot of oxidative stress because the metabolism of carbohydrates creates a lot of oxidative stress. And so you oxidize a lot of essential cofactors uncouple the NOS enzyme and you develop endothelial dysfunction, which means you can't make nitric oxide. Oh, okay. So it's sugar causing heart problems. <laughs> Is that what we're hearing? It's not it's not I'm making assumptions. I'm not, I'm not going <laughs> to like, he said it just kidding. Right. You're like, I'm not being, but really though, think about it. It's like, it's so sad. Cause we're like not getting the nutrients that we need from our food. And then everyone's eating like high fructose corn syrup and sugar all day. It's like, no wonder we're not doing too well in the health department. <laughs> yeah. Hey, to me, it's no wonder why Americans are the sickest population. So as right. I mentioned, we're not getting enough minerals from our diet. Right. There's uh, 200 million Americans wake up every morning and use mouthwash, which kills their oral microbiome. Yeah, that's still these essential that. bacteria. 200 million prescriptions written for antacids every year. That's not even counting the over-the-counter purchases. Uh, and then people don't move and exercise. So right. everything we do and everything that's advised to us by the all- uh, knowing government basically is leading to sicker people. Yep. Uh, yep. And yep. so oh. we have to, we have to correct the ship. And what we do is called 
restorative physiology or applied physiology, understand what goes wrong in biochemical systems and then fix it. Yeah. And you don't do that through pharmaceutical drugs. You do that through good <laughs> nutrition and fixing, right. you know, the deficiencies. All right. Everyone listen very carefully and send this part, whatever the bookmark time stamp is here, <laughs> send this to everyone that you love. Okay. Can you talk about mouthwash? <laughs> yeah. So mouthwash has been a big problem for a, for a number of years. Um, you know, it, the human microbiome project was completed, completely mapped out probably 15 or 20 years ago. And as most of you know, the number of bacteria that live in and on our body outnumber our own human cells 10 to 1. And most of these bacteria are what's called symbionts. So it's a symbiotic relationship. They're there to do things that we as humans can't do. We certainly understand the importance of the gut microbiome and the, the havoc that antibiotics wreak on the gut microbiome. Mm -hmm. And so about 20 years ago, we started really at the beginning, in the mouth on the tongue, what bacteria are responsible for maintaining normal homeostasis and what bacteria were part of this normal ecology of the oral microbiome. And we found that part of their role was to reduce nitrate into nitrite and nitric oxide. So the critical importance in maintaining nitric oxide production. But yet when you use mouthwash, you completely destroy that microbiome and you completely destroy that ecology in the mouth. And, you know, Everybody knows that you don't take an antibiotic every day for the rest of your life because of the known health consequences of destroying the gut microbiome. So why on God's earth would you destroy the oral microbiome every day, sometimes twice a day by using antiseptic mouthwash? And it gets worse. You know, fluoride is an antiseptic. So people are using fluoride-based toothpaste. It's an antiseptic. Uh, it's a neurotoxin and it kills your thyroid function. So yeah. you have to remove fluoride from your toothpaste from your drinking water, you have to get a home filtration system to remove it because it's not just the water you're drinking. It's the water you're cooking in. It's the water you're bathing right. in, showering in. Right. So fluoride is a huge, huge problem. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and we've, we've published and others have shown that if you use mouthwash, it causes an increase in blood pressure. 200 million Americans have an unsafe elevation in blood pressure and 200 million Americans use mouthwash every day. Mm -hmm. It's not a coincidence. And then the biggest issue and I was on the doctor's show, I believe a couple of years ago, we reported that if you use mouthwash, you lose the cardioprotective benefits of exercise. Now think about this. If you're doing all the right things, trying to eat a good diet, kind of working your tail off and exercising, working out every day, but yet you completely eliminate the protective benefits of that because you want to have good breath and fresh breath. It's, I mean, it's a game changer. You have to get people off mouthwash. And I've you know, seen dozens, if not hundreds of people get off prescription medication for their blood pressure when they stop using mouthwash. Because now the body can do what it's designed to do. These bacteria repopulate, they grow, they generate nitric oxide, and they regulate blood pressure. Yeah. Can you talk about the study that you guys did on some young guys where you had them use mouthwash? <laughs> well, in 2014, we published a paper basically showing that the people who had the best blood pressure had the greatest diversity in the oral microbiome. And those that had pre-hypertension or full-blown hypertension had the least diverse oral microbiome. So that was a nice association, meaning that people with better diversity of bacteria had better blood pressure. But it didn't um, really establish causation. Yeah. So we modified the study. And so we took young, healthy individuals and we gave took daily blood pressure readings. Uh, we gave them mouthwash for seven days and then did daily tongue scrapings and did see what bacteria we were destroying, and did this have any effect on their blood pressure? And then we published this, I believe, in 2019. But in one patient, we made a 19-year-old dental student, his blood pressure went up 27 millimeters of mercury in seven days from using mouthwash. So we made a young, healthy triathlete, good diet, clinically hypertensive just by using mouthwash twice a day. But fortunately, four days after we stopped the mouthwash, his blood pressure completely normalized. And we were able to pick up the bacteria that disappeared when his blood pressure went up and reappeared when his blood pressure normalized. So now there's a clear, and we have a clear understanding now of which bacteria are responsible for regulating nitric oxide production and therefore so cool. regulating blood flow and blood pressure. That is so cool. What an incredible find. I always joke with my clients. I'm like, 
just remember, I don't know how the body works and no one does completely because I can't just make a body out of thin air. So I obviously right. don't completely understand how it works, but I'm like, we've found some cool stuff. And that's like, that's another cool find is like understanding the connection between your blood pressure with your oral microbiome and like, which ones like that's a huge find. So awesome work. <laughs> yeah, It explains, you know, explains resistant hypertension because we know that America, 50% of the people that are prescribed blood pressure medicines don't respond with better blood pressure. And because none of these medications are affecting the oral microbiome. In fact, a lot of medications disrupt the oral microbiome. Yeah. So now if you can just allow the body to, our philosophy is if you give the body what it needs, the body heals itself. Right. right? So get right. out of the way, stop right. doing things that disrupt normal metabolism, stop doing things that disrupt the microbiome, whether it's the oral microbiome or the gut microbiome, feed yeah. these guys the good stuff and they'll reward your body. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm kind of like thinking if I was listening to this, I would probably still be a little bit caught up on the, the food thing. Cause that's <laughs> obviously a big, important thing to yeah. me. And, um, I just want to like, let you guys know, of course, like he does, you do have a nitric oxide supplement that you can take also, which I take every day. And it's actually really tastes good. It's like dissolves on your tongue. And it's like yeah. citrusy and it's delicious. Right. So you guys can check that out at N one O like the letter O not zero N one O one.com. And let's talk about the skin stuff too. Cause it's like, yeah. when you brought that up, when you're talking about it, like I, I'll be really real with you. Like that's not as big of an interest for me as like these internal systems, the body and the gut microbiome, the oral microbiome and all this stuff. Yeah. But I, then I was like, what? <laughs> so can you talk about the skin stuff with nitric oxide? And that's all on this N101.com sure. too, but like, tell us what you found. Well, once we understood how to make nitric oxide and what goes wrong and people can't make nitric oxide, and then, then we had product technology that actually generates nitric oxide gas. So our, my whole philosophy for the past 25 years is if your body can't make nitric oxide for whatever reason, then we have to do it for you, right? And so my interest was in drug development and trying to overcome nitric oxide deficiency in really sick patients, like patients had a heart attack or stroke or mm -hmm. you know, cardiovascular disease. And so what we realized that with nitric oxide was extremely protective. And if you could restore blood flow to an organ, you could restore the function of that organ. And then we think, well, I mean, obvious, the skin is an organ, right? In fact, mm -hmm. it's one of our largest organs. And without sufficient blood flow to the skin, just like without sufficient blood flow to the brain or the heart, that mm -hmm. organ will fail. And so you develop fine lines and wrinkles, you develop acne, you lose collagen, you lose hydration. And quite honestly, you look old and you look off, you lose color. But mm -hmm. no, under normal conditions, the skin is an outward reflection of internal health. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you're not healthy internally, your skin is not going to reflect that at all. And to mm -hmm. the contrary, if you're doing everything you need to do, you got good internal physiology and you're healthy, then your skin will reflect that as well. Mm -hmm. So then we, we developed a topical nitric oxide. It's a dual chamber uh, nitric oxide system. It's a topical. You mix one pump from one side, one pump from the other. And when you mix it together and apply it to the face, the nitric oxide gas diffuses into the dermis, it recruits capillaries, it dilates blood vessels, and we can now force blood flow so to cool. wherever you apply it. And so we've yeah. got four published clinical trials where, I mean, it's transformative after 30 days. Fine lines and wrinkles disappear. We improve collagen deposition, hydration. We improve cellular turnover. So we're mobilizing stem cells and you slough off the old skin and your body puts on new, really well hydrated um, skin and it's, it's been transformative. It's so cool. And like, I, you guys got to go to the website. I'm sure you guys have lots here, of pictures. The build chamber. Nice. Yeah. You, like, I mean, pictures say a million words. Like that's why I was like, wait, really? <laughs> like, holy Well, smokes. let me do it. I think maybe this with the lighting. So I'll just show you how this works because you can actually see this product working right before your eyes. So one pump from one side, one pump from the oh. other. Go over to then YouTube you, if you're listening on audio so you can see this guys. And then you mix it together. And so you'll see three things. So you'll see fine bubbles start to form. So that's nitric oxide gas. Mm -hmm. And then you'll see the veins on the back of my hand start to dilate and become more pronounced. Mm -hmm. But then wherever we apply this, it'll turn pink. So we're recruiting capillaries. Wow. And forcing blood flow wherever you apply. It. So cool. So this is a game changer. In fact, it's a yeah. new category in skincare because most skincare products are hiding or trying to you know, block the blemishes and fill in the fine right. lines and wrinkles. What we do is get to the root cause. Yeah. And basically the root cause is insufficient blood flow, loss of collagen, loss of hydration, 
It's super cool. It reminds me of like, like when I first found about PRP, you know, I had hamstring tendonitis, right. And I'm like platelet rich plasma. I'm like, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Cause I can't get blood flow. You don't get a lot of blood flow to your tendons, especially like no. deep at the attachment point. So if you can get blood, you know, take the platelets out of your blood, inject it in there, you know, stick some ozone, like oxygen, like get it That's in right. there, then your body can heal itself. So you're doing that with the skin. So it makes sense why you're having such dramatic because you're, you're enhancing the body's ability to heal itself, like you said, which is... That's exactly right. In fact, this technology has been so successful that we've taken this and developing a drug, a topical drug for diabetic ulcers and for cool. non-healing wounds. So we have a, this a more potent drug product of this going into clinical trials because we're finding three wow. to four-year-old non-healing ulcers we can heal in you know, three, four, five months. I mean, it's remarkable so cool. and it's, it's a game changer in wound care. That's super cool. That's got to feel so good oh, yeah. <laughs> as a scientist. It's like, yes, like, because it's really going to dramatically improve somebody's life, you know? For sure. So very powerful. If I recall correctly um, from your presentation, don't you talk about different areas of the world, like his cultures and things that had more nitric oxide, like uh, Japan is coming to mind. Am I correct on that? Could you share about that? Well, there's, yeah. So we've, we've gone all over the world. I've been to Tibet and, and, Kathmandu and all, and look at this, those people who live at 12,000 feet above sea level. So when we go, if we were to go from, uh, you know, sea level to 12,000 feet above uh, in altitude, you know, we need two to three, sometimes a week to acclimate to that low oxygen. Mm -hmm. But the people, the natives of Tibet are up there and they don't get mountain sickness. So the question was, how have these people acclimated to living in a low oxygen environment at 12,000 feet above sea level? Mm -hmm. And the answer was that they've improved their nitric oxide production capability. So the natural adaptation or acclimatization to low oxygen through altitude is an upregulation in nitric oxide being produced. So that's what we do with the lozenge or anything that we mm -hmm. do. So if you have problem acclimating to, you know, whether you're going to Mexico or, or Colorado to the, to the ski slopes and you have problems acclimating, you just take our nitric oxide, we acclimate for you. And yeah. same thing. And that's Super the reason cool. athletes train at high altitude. Right. You know, because they adapt, their nitric right. oxide production goes up. Now they come back down and they're a well old machine and they can out compete uh -huh. the competition. I have felt that I, because I, I live in Salt Lake City, I think we're somewhere around like 4,500 yeah. feet elevation. And I was like at, at a conference in Austin one time. And I was, I was training for a half marathon and I was only supposed to run like three miles that morning. Right. But I'm almost sea level at Austin. Right. It's pretty low compared to where right. I live. And I felt so invincible. <laughs> I never wanted, I ended up running 10 miles. I'm like, I'm doing my long run right now. Right now. So I have lived that experience of like, it's it real. does kind of make you feel, I felt like I was like, not even a human. <laughs> like I was like, this is so, I can go as fast as I want, as far as I want, you know? So yeah. Well, I've I, done that in September. I was in Kathmandu, which is about, I think 9,000 feet above sea level, right at the base wow. of Mount Everest. Okay. And of course it's a long trip. It's like a 17 hour flight. And then I get to the hotel and no matter where I go, the first thing I do is get checked in. Then I go to the gym mm -hmm. and I get on the treadmill and I'm trying to run my three miles. And I'm like, what the hell is going right. I mean, I'm not that tired. And then you realize, oh, it's altitude. I just went from sea level to 10,000 feet in 17 <laughs> hours on a plane. Right. <laughs> yeah. No time to acclimate. So then you grabbed your nitric oxide. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Started taking that. to the races. <laughs> Oh man. Um, I was wondering, so I've worked with some guys coming out of the NFL. I've worked with people who've had a lot of, you know, traumatic brain injuries, concussions, just from life being adrenaline junkies or whatnot. Yeah. Can you talk about nitric oxide for those kind of people? Yeah. So I follow the work of Daniel Amen. He's done great work in kind of mapping what goes wrong in individual brains. And Dr. Amen has come to the conclusion that the root cause of any neurological disease is loss of regulation of blood flow. So especially in, you know, chronic concussion syndrome and chronic traumatic encephalopathy, post-concussion syndrome, there's usually, again, it's always four things. It's low blood flow, what we call ischemia or hypoxia, immune dysfunction, and oxidative stress. So if you can restore blood flow, which is what nitric oxide does, then you can start perfusing those areas of the brain that aren't getting sufficient blood flow. And nitric oxide suppresses the inflammation, which is critical in, in TBI. And then it prevents the oxidative stress and immune dysfunction. Mm. So we found that even in, you know, uh, whether it's uh, TBI or post-concussion syndrome, or even in people with vascular dementia or mild cognitive disorders, 
if we can do functional MRI or spec scans of the brain and then we give them our nitric oxide for 30 days, you see a complete restoration of perfusion to the brain, their cognition improves, their symptoms go away. So nitric oxide is critically important for all aspects of the symptomology of CTE or TBI. Obviously, I understand bio-individuality, but with people like that, are you giving them more than just like one lozenge typically is a higher dose, I would assume? Yeah, look, I mean, everybody, it's, it's, it's difficult, if not impossible, to kind of prescribe a one size exactly. fits all because people- It doesn't make any I mean, sense. You and I are much different than somebody with, right. with chronic traumatic encephalopathy or traumatic right. brain injury. So yeah, you have to dose accordingly and everybody's different. What's the level mm-hmm. of inflammation? What's the degree of ischemia and loss of regulation of blood flow in that patient? Mm-hmm. Are they toxic? Do they have heavy metals? You know, and I, I want to make something very clear that nitric oxide is foundational for everything we do, but it's not the end all be all cure all. Yeah. I think right. it's a great start, but you still have to dig a little bit deeper and the physicians have to figure for out sure. what else is going on with this patient. Is the problem with them? The HPA axis is it, right. uh, you know, they have some form of toxicity. Is right. there a structural or an anatomical issue? Mm-hmm. Uh, are they mm-hmm. hormone deficient? Because if right. we're deficient in hormones, then you know, our body's not going to heal. Is there a resource for like doctors practicing, you know, clinicians who are very familiar with your work or with nitric oxide and this, you know, is there a place people can specifically go for that? Well, you know, Tara, we've, We've been trying to do that now for more than 20 years. And last year, I started a company called the Nitric Oxide um, Research Institute. Mm-hmm. So what we're doing, we're an education company. Okay. And we put together a 16 to 17 hour course mm-hmm. on nitric oxide. And so we talk about, and these physicians will get an accreditation or certification as a so-called nitric oxide physician. But we bring in people like Dr. Amen, Joe Maroon from the Pittsburgh Steelers to talk about concussion and traumatic brain injury. Mm-hmm. Physicians like Mark Houston, cardiologist, Ernst Schwartz, uh, OB-GYNs like Felice Kirsch, and really talk about all aspects of clinical medicine and how do we integrate or at least consider nitric nice. oxide as a treatment regimen. So we're, we'll have that program and curriculum uh, probably up in the next um, 90 days. So physicians mm-hmm. can actually go and register for that course. Awesome. It'll be online and they can also do it in person at, at select conferences or around mm. the, the conferences that pick up this, but it's our objective to really fill that, that need that you just talked about, how do physicians gain information on this and really start to figure out because every, every physician or healthcare practitioner has a patient that's very complicated. that's unmanaged, right. That they can't seem to crack the code on it. And I think that's where nitric oxide is going to play such a life changing role because nitric oxide in my 25 years of research has really been the missing component in most therapies. Mm. Um, so I saw this, uh, Instagram posts that you did where, where you were like, so, um, scientifically like just calling out <laughs> fake, not to make, you're like, here, let's just prove it. Here's how you have like yeah. a meter. Can you talk about this? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, look, I mean, there's hundreds of nitric oxide products out there and dozens if not hundreds of companies <clears throat> selling these products and somebody who's been in the nitric oxide field for spent my entire academic and professional career. Yeah. You know, you have to maintain the integrity of the science. And there's sure. so many companies just, there's two, there's two violators. There's just the ignorant, naive companies who just don't know any better. Mm-hmm. Products together, call it nitric oxide. And that's fine. You know, ignorance is curable. You know, it's just a lack of information. We can cure that. The other problem and the major violators are those companies that know that the science doesn't meet the rigor, their products don't meet the rigor of the science, but yet they're still out there marketing as a nitric oxide product. And those are the people that I intentionally call out yeah. because you can kill an entire field, an important life-changing field of nitric oxide by consumers buying these products that don't work and then saying, oh, well, I tried nitric oxide. It did right. nothing for me. Or in fact, it made me sicker. Right. And then it kills the whole field. Yeah. So okay. I intentionally call these people mm-hmm. out and I've got very sophisticated equipment where we can determine, do they have enough or a certain threshold of these substrates that can generate nitric oxide? And then number two, do they actually deliver on the brand promise. And there's no products out there except the ones that I've developed that actually generate nitric oxide. But yet there's hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars in revenue generated from these companies selling nitric oxide products that don't work. Mm -hmm. And it's my intention to call all these out. And I give people the challenge. If you've got a nitric oxide product that you're taking, uh, send it to me. I'll test it and I'll tell you whether it's 
does it or not. But there's two main categories. There's these arginine citrulline based products and there's the mm-hmm. beetroot product. Mm-hmm. Arginine and citrulline or semi-essential amino acids, our body makes them up through the urea cycle and through the breakdown of proteins that you never need to supplement with those. So just save your money. Those products don't work. In fact, as I mentioned, the enzyme that converts those to nitric oxide is what becomes dysfunctional. So giving more is not going to fix that enzyme. In fact, it makes it worse. Mm. The other is these beetroot products. 99% of the beetroots out there on the market don't do anything in terms of nitric oxide. Uh, and then there's companies out there selling beet chews or heart chews that say nitric oxide. And right. again, there's three to four grams of sugars or carbohydrates in there. You <laughs> cannot put nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a gas. It's gone in less than a second. You cannot, in any figment of the imagination, generate nitric oxide in the form of a chew. <laughs> but yet there are companies out there doing it and it drives me, it makes my blood pressure go up and I have to take my own products to normalize my anxiety. Seriously though, I feel you. I mean, I've, I've been exposed to the money hungry, dark side of the supplement world oh, yeah. and it is alive and well, they do not care. It is all about money. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It says it has its in it. It's like, ha, 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 ha. That is literally the energy. Like, be not, don't be ignorant, guys, listening. Because it's like, that is super alive and well because it's such an unregulated, you know, industry. It's just like, very. Yeah, there's bad actors out there that, you know, it's it's trying to, it's everything at the, to make a dollar. At the expense of the consumer, at the expense of integrity, at the expense Mm -hmm. of honor and dignity to the science. and. It's my mission to call those people out right? Uh, because if you do the right thing and you rely on the science and you put the best science forward, mm-hmm. the product will sell itself. So my job is not to sell you product. My job is to inform and educate right. so that your consumers and you know which products that are going to provide you the best benefit uh, for the best value. Exactly. Integrity. And... You got some books. <laughs> so I read your um, functional nit- nitric oxide nutrition. It's, I really appreciate it because it is extremely to the point. Like there's no, it's not one of those overwhelming, like, it's just like, here's all the information you need to know. So we'll link that up. You've got some other books too, that I haven't read, right? You've got, is this the nitric oxide solution? Is that yours? Yeah, that was a long time ago. This the yeah. functional nitric oxide solution is the most up to date. I've got a okay. new book coming out probably in the fall. Of this year okay. called the secret of nitric oxide and get a major publisher cool. that's going to be bringing it to bringing it out but this is Good. really it's twofold number one to tell my personal story of discovery and how we've made these nice. discoveries in the, in the scientific field but two educate and inform on the importance of nitric oxide mm-hmm. and really to show people you know i've had to overcome many many hurdles people have you know attacked me ridiculed me uh, sued me yeah because we're doing things that are really disruptive and calling out the so-called pretenders. Yeah. So I think, I hope it's, you know, an inspiration and motivation for people to stick to it, stay the course. Mm-hmm. If you're doing good things, people are going to come after you. Yep. If you're doing things that are trivial and don't mean anything, people leave you alone. Mm-hmm. So I wear it as a badge of courage. Come mm-hmm. after me. The truth's on my side and the That's truth awesome. will set us free and the truth's going to prevail. So I'm really excited about that book. I'm That's in the cool. process of writing it now and it's really, it's fun to look back on everything yeah. that's happened. And, you know, I think God puts people in our lives at the right times to kind of allow us to pivot yep. and uh, change perspective. And it's, you know, that's certainly been my life story is, you know, lots of pivot, lots of hurdles, but it's persistence uh, that pays off. Yeah. I'm glad you're doing that. And I'm glad that, yeah, that it's like, it's it's so cool when we each go into our own unique like passion, gift, curiosity, combine those all things, all of those things together. Cause I'm sure when you were a little boy in your preschool graduation and they said, what do you want to be when you grow up? You didn't say, I'm going to be a PhD researcher on nitric (laughs) oxide, you know? And so it's just like, follow the journey, follow that. It's like a pulling from your soul. That's like, this is important. This matters. And I'm good at this and I care about it, you know? And it's like, you're leaving this legacy behind and it's so cool. It's so well, important. I realized that, you know, the, the longer I live, I look back and realize how little influence I had on my direction, you know, and on my life. I think you know, we're, right. God puts, puts us on this path and, yep. you know, gives each of us our own unique gifts and we got to make the best of it. So I, I mm-hmm. made a commitment. I'll never compromise principle and I won't squander this wonderful gift that God gave. Yeah. Thank you for showing up in integrity. 
and pedal to the meddling it a little bit on the speaking gigs because I know you've been all over the map. So I'm sure if you guys want to hear Nathan speak in person, like you probably can find it somewhere in your area at some point. So we appreciate you showing up to the plate and thank you for coming and sharing with my audience today. Thank you, Tara. It's been a great pleasure and uh, hope to see you soon. Yeah, likewise.